Hello and welcome. In this educational aid, we'll discuss launch, propulsion, and reentry. These three critical areas require robust propulsion systems. In this educational aid, we identify key terminology needed to better understand propulsion, going into detail on launch constraints and phases, and identify propulsion systems used for launches, spacecraft maneuvering, and reentry. The key terms we need to cover are inclination, thrust, specific impulse, and delta V. Recall from the COE educational aid that inclination is orbit tilt. It is measured from the Earth's equatorial plane to the orbital plane. The desired orbital plane and thus inclination plays an important role in getting our spacecraft to the desired orbit. We will cover this further when we discuss launch windows. Thrust is the force produced by the propulsion system, measured in newtons or pound force. If we use an automobile analogy, think horsepower. Specific impulse, depicted by ISP, refers to the efficiency of the propulsion system. Think of pounds of thrust generated by each pound of propellant expended. Again, using the automobile analogy, this would be gas mileage or miles per gallon. And last is delta V. Delta means change, and the V stands for velocity. So delta V means change of velocity. Delta V describes the change of velocity needed to get into orbit or maneuver from one orbit to another. Recall from the gravity educational aid that a spacecraft requires a velocity of approximately 8 kilometers per second to maintain an orbit at LEO. A launch vehicle will take our spacecraft from 0 kilometers per second relative to the ground to 8 kilometers per second, so a delta V of 8 kilometers per second. However, the launch vehicle will need to overcome drag and gravity as it raises to an orbital altitude. So, a launch vehicle will need to generate or expend an equivalent of 9.5 kilometers per second of delta V to achieve burnout in LEO going 8 kilometers per second. To achieve orbit, we use systems called launch vehicles. Some launch vehicles are relatively small and some are quite large. Depending upon your spacecraft mass and the orbit required for your particular mission, we'll determine the launch vehicle required. Each launch vehicle has a limit for mass to orbit. The larger the orbit required, the smaller the mass to orbit a launch vehicle can provide. No matter the orbit you place your spacecraft, the launch vehicle will use staging to achieve orbit. Staging is the dumping of unnecessary mass during launch. The unnecessary mass is the used propellant tanks and the launch vehicle structure housing those tanks. When the stage is depleted of propellant, the excess mass is dropped and the next stage rockets at nights, accelerating the remaining launch vehicle higher and faster. Eventually, this process will achieve the required altitude and velocity to maintain the desired orbit. The launch vehicle capability is just one constraint to consider to get into orbit. When you can launch is another constraint that limits launch. We refer to this time constraint as the launch window. The size of the launch window can range from a few seconds to hours. The duration of the window is a factor of Earth's rotation, the launch site latitude, launch vehicle performance, and weather, to name a few. The launch site latitude determines the minimum inclination the launch vehicle can insert the spacecraft without propellant costly autoplane thruster maneuvering. So, if the desired orbital inclination is equal to or greater than the launch site latitude, then you can launch directly into the desired orbit. If the desired inclination is less than the launch site latitude, then you cannot launch into that orbit without costly thruster maneuvering. So if we need to launch directly into a specific orbital plane that is inclined more than the latitude of the launch site, two windows a day are available. If we need to launch directly into an orbit that is equal to the launch latitude, there is only one window per day. And if we need to launch directly into a specific orbital plane that is inclined less than our launch latitude, there are no launch windows that will allow a direct launch. Let's look at a real life example of launch windows, but from the perspective of mission planning support when choosing the desired orbit.
Recall from the classical orbital elements educational aid that the inclination of the International Space Station is 51.64 degrees. One reason for this is one of the many international partners to the ISS, Russia, needs to launch. Russia's manned mission launch site, the Baikonur Cosmodrome, has a latitude of 45.96 degrees north, whereas NASA's Cape Canaveral launch site has a latitude of 28.47 degrees north. If mission designers did not account for the support of the Russian partners and choose a lower inclination for the ISS, such as 28.5 degrees, as of 2018, there would not be a way without costly out-of-plane maneuvers to get astronauts or cosmonauts to the space station. Launch sites are all over the globe. When we launch into a direct or prograde orbit, the launch vehicle leverages the Earth's rotation requiring less delta V to achieve the desired orbit. The greater the latitude of the launch site, such as Baikonur, the smaller the effect the Earth's rotation can be realized. The closer the launch site is to the equator, like Brazil's Alencarta launch site at 2.32 degrees south, the greater the effect of the Earth's rotation can be realized. The Earth's rotation at specific latitudes is only a minor concern when compared to plane changes after launch. If you cannot launch directly into your desired orbital plane, a plane change is required. Changing the inclination of your orbital plane is very costly in terms of propellant usage and additional mass to orbit. Inclination changes shorten spacecraft operational life if not planned for. And if it is planned for, the added mass for additional propellant increases the cost of launch. Recall from the gravity educational aid. In order for a satellite to orbit the Earth, you must have a sufficient horizontal velocity that the satellite keeps missing the Earth as it falls around the Earth. And that velocity is about 8 kilometers per second at LEO. Launch vehicles deliver this horizontal velocity in four phases. The first phase is vertical ascent. The vertical ascent goal is to gain altitude quickly as possible to get out of the dense atmosphere. This phase provides altitude and vertical velocity, but its horizontal velocity is still quite small. After the vertical ascent is the pitch over phase. During this phase, the launch vehicle orients itself to prepare for the next phase. This phase occurs when the launch vehicle has entered a point where the atmosphere density has reduced so the launch vehicle is capable of handling the structural load of being in this orientation. The next phase is the gravity turn. After the vertical ascent, very little of the thrust for the launch vehicle is used to counter gravity. The gravity turn is used to accelerate the vehicle to build horizontal velocity. The last phase is the vacuum phase. Above approximately 60 miles, the launch vehicle is effectively out of the Earth's atmosphere and continues to accelerate to gain the necessary horizontal velocity to achieve orbit. Typical propulsion systems used for launch are systems that create high thrust and moderate ISP. Currently, liquid or solid rocket systems are used for launching spacecraft into orbit. We need high thrust for launch because the thrust to weight ratio has to be greater than one to get off the pad. That's not a requirement for orbital maneuvering, so we can use low thrust, which generally corresponds to higher ISP and overall lower mass for these systems. Once we get into orbit, we now need to maneuver our spacecraft. We maneuver for several reasons. We may have launched directly into our orbit, now we have to maintain this orbit. Depending on the specific space environment effects, and the user needs will determine how much and how often we maneuver for station keeping operations. For more information concerning the space environment, please see the Space Environment Educational Aid. Typical propulsion systems used for station keeping are compressed gas, liquid, arcjet, ion, and plasma. Oftentimes, once our launch vehicle gets us into orbit, we are only in a parking orbit. A parking orbit is a temporary orbit the spacecraft operates in to test communication to and from the spacecraft and ground stations and turn on and test critical subsystems required to get to the desired operational orbit. The launch vehicle may take the spacecraft to an orbital altitude of 450 kilometers, but our operational orbit may be 36,000 kilometers. To raise our orbit, the propulsion system will need to provide a significant amount of delta V. Typical propulsion systems used for orbit raising are liquid, arcjet, ion, 
and plasma. Re-entry refers to the disposal of a spacecraft from its operational orbit. In most cases, this is the deorbiting of a spacecraft in LEO and returning the spacecraft to Earth at the end of spacecraft's operational life. The desired effect is to have most, if not all, the mass of the spacecraft burned up in the Earth's atmosphere. If there is any part of the spacecraft that is not burned up, the desire is for it to land in the ocean or somewhere not heavily populated. However, deorbiting a spacecraft in MEO and GEO is not practiced. The huge amount of propellant and delta V required to return the spacecraft from these orbits back to the Earth would add exponentially to the mass of the spacecraft and the total mass of the launch vehicle needed to get into orbit. Therefore, making launch and development of spacecraft even more expensive. So instead of returning to Earth from MEO or GEO, spacecraft in these orbits are raised out of the orbit that is heavily used. An example of this is the GEO belt. Spacecraft in GEO have a semi-major axis of 42,160 kilometers. It is not optimal to have a dead satellite drifting through the GEO belt. Before the end of life of the spacecraft, satellite operators would typically command the satellite to fire thrusters to raise the orbit by at least 250 kilometers. This practice is called supersinking the spacecraft. Typical propulsion systems used for LEO reentry are liquid propellant systems. We will go into more detail on these and other propulsion systems in the Propulsion System Fundamentals Educational Aid. Well, that is it for launch propulsion and reentry. I am Jeremy Brown with the National Security Space Institute, and I hope you enjoyed this educational aid.